So today we have another sample response for you. This time it is a response to a question, uh, speaking question number two, which is an integrated task. So the integrated tasks are slightly different because you have a reading and then a listening that you have to do. And then after you've done that, you give your answer based on the information in the reading and listening. So we're going to listen to the sample answer now. And uh, at the end, we will talk about what makes it a good answer. So we will be scoring the sample answer on three points. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, delivery, which includes pronunciation and intonation and uh, pace. We will talk about uh, topic development, which includes whether they've answered the question. And we'll discuss language use, which covers grammar and vocabulary. So let's listen and then we'll talk about the answer afterwards. The proposal suggests that the hours of bike borrowing program should be limited to four hours, so more students get a chance to borrow bikes. Also, instead of leaving cash as a deposit, she suggests leaving student ID instead, so students don't need to remember to carry cash. The man disagrees because sometimes he and his friend would like to borrow the bikes to go on hikes that are out of town. This could easily take them the whole day, sometimes returning at night, so four hours is too short. He disagreed with the second suggestion because although a lot of buildings on campus don't need a student ID, some do uh, need a student ID to get in. So leaving the student ID as a deposit is not practical. Okay, so let's review this sample answer together and discuss what uh, makes it good. And then we can talk about um, how good it is. So we'll begin by talking about delivery. Now, for delivery, we are looking for whether her speech is clear, is fluid and sustained. So what do we mean by this? Well, clear means that we can understand every word she says. And for the most part, well, not for the most part, we can pretty much understand every word she says. Okay, Even though there are some slight issues with pronunciation, which we'll talk about in a moment, we can still understand her. So she can still get a very uh, high mark. Fluid, she speaks naturally um, with very little interruption. There are some points where she pauses to um, recall information, but that's okay. Because even in the, in the speaking rubric, it mentions that if someone pauses to try and recall or remember something, it's okay as long as it's not too frequent and doesn't interrupt the flow of speech. So that's fine. Uh, so what can we say about her pronunciation? Um, some slight errors. So for example, the word suggests, she has a trouble, she has some trouble saying this word. It ends up sounding like suggests, suggests, which is incorrect. She wants to say suggests. So that's a small or minor error, which she makes in terms of, of pronunciation. But overall, it's pretty good. And the final thing we can say is her speech is mostly sustained, so there's no interruption, but she doesn't fully use up the 60 seconds. I think her response is about 54 seconds or so. So when given your answer, you want to try and use all the time. If you can't use the entire 60 seconds, then at least use 57 seconds. You don't want to go less than that. Okay. Now let's talk about her language use. Uh, we'll begin with vocabulary. Vocabulary is perfectly fine. She uses a uh, wording that is appropriate um, to talk about the bike borrowing program. Uh, she refers to the student ID, the buildings on campus. So that the, there's no real issue with her vocabulary here. Um, it's nice and simple, it's easy to understand. So that's also a good point to, re to remember. Um, always try and keep your vocabulary uh, simple. Don't try and overcomplicate it. Um, she uses some good collocations. So for example, she says to Students don't have to carry cash. Okay, so carry cash, those two words go, go together. So that's also very good. Um, now let's talk a bit about grammar. Again, overall, her grammar is uh, pretty solid. There are a few minor errors. So for instance, at the beginning, she says that the proposal suggests that the hours of bike borrowing program, slightly strange. She could have rephrased this better. She could have said, um, hours for, and then because it's, it's a specific program, a specific program, she should have used the article the, the bike, 
uh, borrowing program because we're talking about a particular program. Okay, so that could have been improved, change off to four, and then include the article the because we're talking about a specific program. Um, so that's a, a minor, a very minor grammar mistake. It didn't really interfere with our understanding, so it's not so much of a big deal. But it's, also, it's good to know um, these minor mistakes. Um, another thing she mentions is the man disagrees because sometimes he and his friends would like to borrow the bike. Again, this is slightly inaccurate because in the recording, the man refers to something that he does regularly, has been doing so for the past. So would like to borrow is kind of um, the wrong uh, phrase to use. Perhaps a better way to have phrases would have been because sometimes he and his friends like to borrow because it's a thing that they do as a habit. So the present simple would have been a better choice here. But again, it doesn't really interfere with our understanding of what she's trying to say. So it's not a, a big issue. So overall, we can say her grammar is quite good. So the next point is topic development, which is our last point. So for topic development, does her answer provide a clear progression of ideas? Does she give the relevant information? And does she give enough information? And again, here we can say, yes, she does. So for instance, she highlights the suggestion from the reading, which is where she begins. She talks about extending the program and changes that could be made to the program. Okay, and then she nicely links to the man's point of view in the listening. Okay, she points out he disagrees and she lists the reasons why he disagrees. Primarily two reasons, because four hours is too short and also students need their ID to enter certain buildings. So again, we see how the ideas are connected and we have enough information to understand the idea. So topic development is also very good here. So overall, what can we say? Well, using the general description, uh, it says that for a high score, the response uh, fulfills the demands of the task, which she did very well. Um, it is highly intelligible. So again, we could understand her clearly and exhibit sustained and coherent discourse. So in other words, it's continuous, it's easy to follow. Some minor errors in grammar. And also she doesn't use the full amount of time. So we could say her, her, her score for this would probably be around, we we'll say a 26 overall. So it's a very good answer, um, but she could improve with uh, some of her pronunciation. So for example, that word that we said suggests instead of suggest is, and she also wants to be careful with her, her grammar, make sure she uses articles in the right place. And with those improvements, she could easily get a higher score. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it's useful. And I would appreciate uh, your, your comments. I would like to know from you with question number two, um, what is the most difficult thing for you? Okay, so what is the most difficult thing for you for question number two? Okay, so leave your comments down below and don't forget to subscribe because when you subscribe, it's easier for me to make more free content um, that can benefit you and help you get a, a higher score. And uh, we'll see you next video. Next video, we will be looking at a question number three. Okay, another integrated task. And we will discuss what makes it good um, and what you can learn from it. So see you in the next video.